couldn't stop. Someday it's too messy. Do you know what you should do? You should just talk and you'll bore the bastard to death. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Glasgow Dad podcast. Coming up this week. So tell the viewers about Bible John, about his MO. What did he do? His MO? His modus operandi. Oh, his motive? No. The way he did it. How did he do it? Where did oh, he meet his victims? Well, I'm a comedian, <laughs> not a care worker. Right. Nielsen goes down the manhole takes the body parts away and Dino Rod guy comes back the next day and says I'm sure I saw a horn down there you've saved and yourself an arm and a leg <laughs> <laughs> Harold Shipman he murdered 250 pensioners I think the only positive to come out of that is you're probably likely to get an appointment at that doctor's you certainly would but before all that we're talking about serial killers Serial killers, man. That's, that's not a normal killer, which is one person, a person that kills hundreds of people because he's ate his Weetabix. <laughs> so Scottish ones in particular. Scottish, Scottish serial killers? Aye. Well, I, I, well you know, serial killers as, as a worldwide phenomenon. But funnily enough, Scotland has had, per head of population, Slightly more serial killers than the rest of the world, and that is interesting. Mm. We had uh, Bible John, we had Peter Tobin, we had Ian Brady, mm. some people don't know that, and Dennis Nielsen. You remember Dennis Nielsen, the Muswell Hill murderer? Right, that's not in Scotland though, is it? Well, well, he never done his murders in Scotland. What he did was he went to Serial Killer University <laughs> and got his degree in serial killing and went to London and right. did his practical right. doing so he, there. He got a first tier and went didn't to college there. That's what seems to have happened. He worked in a job centre in Kentish Town or something like that and he lived in he lived in Muswell Hill, which was North London, very nice part of London. Right. And he was he was a mad alky and he lived with his dog, his wee dog called, I think his dog was called Spot. <laughs> and there's video of him and all that, of him shouting at the dog when he was steaming and all that. But he murdered 15 people, Jeez. Dennis Nielsen. And then what he did was, he would, he would murder the person and then put the person under the flare boards. And then he'd take him back out the, up the flare boards Gear body a wash, put clean pants and a vest on it, and then line tappy the body and masturbate. And then once he'd done his business, put the body back under the flare boards. Yes, them with a laptop. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and a laptop. Aye, fair enough. <laughs> that was a, the original seventies laptops. That's what. That's what that meant. <laughs> well, uh, well, that's what you do. You take it out and then you... You take what out? The laptop. Then you do your thing and then you put the laptop away. But he just did that with bodies. Fair enough. Dennis Nielsen. Anyway. And you mentioned uh, he was uh, bad to his dog. Cause that's well, a... no, he, he was shouting at the dog. The man, the man was... I think the man had some personal issues. Uh, murdered 15 <laughs> people. Uh, no, he's not got any personal issues. He was just going about his business, right? But... Uh, <laughs> He was quite disturbed, uh, you know, I, I mean, but I find people in the job centre are generally very difficult to <laughs> go on with anyway. I've not seen everybody in the job centres, serial killers. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, he was just shouting at the dog and the dog would, when the dog's not doing with its tail. Mm -hmm. I wish a point. No, I'm just saying, if you're, if you research it or you look back, if people or kids are bad to pets when they're younger... Oh, right. They've got a higher chance that's right. being a serial killer. That's right, absolutely. I, I, I think it's... See, I do tend to have a point now and aye, again. Because it's generally accepted that psychopaths, when they're children, there's wee red flags. You know, they would torture bees or, you know, kill moles and, you know, you know undermine woodland animals. Well, Brady go used badger to, hunting. Brady used to cut cats' ears off. Ian Brady, is uh, that right? And he used to uh, cut rabbits' heads off and all that. 
Is that right? Mm. Hey, where did you find out about that? I just know about serial killers. <laughs> Is that right? You just know that's just something you learn does. Because obviously, my knowledge of the serial killers is uh, they've, they've all there's books been written about all these people. Mm. Now, Dennis Nielsen specifically, there there was a book written about him. It was called Killing for Company. And then the first person Dennis Nielsen killed was a fella called Kenneth Ockenden, who was a Canadian tourist. And Dennis Nielsen was a gay gay man. And, and Kenneth Ockenden went into the pub Dennis Nielsen drank in. And Dennis Nielsen had never killed anybody before. And this was the first person he killed. And this is the way, this, according to the book, this is what it says in the book. And so he was drinking with this guy. So Nielsen and this guy Ken Ockenden they were drinking in a pub and getting on great and Nielsen invited them back to his house and what happened was they're, they're having a drink and they, they were listening to records and they had because he's in a flat they had big headphones you know they cup ear cup yeah. ears headphones with the curly cord going into the record player no Wi-Fi in any days right no Bluetooth and it was curly cord was in the record player and Ken Ockenden's listening to I don't know the Bee Gees or something I've been there 1975 I think this happened and what do you mean ABBA actually one of Eurovision 74 so he listened to it and this is Nielsen's own words in the book he said and I was behind him and I was seeing him listen to the headphones and I thought, he's going to leave me and he's going to, I'm going to be lonely again. He's going to leave. So I'm paraphrasing, but this is what he said in the book. He took the, the headphones, the cord, and he strangled them with the, the, the curly cord on the headphones because he didn't want him to leave. That's why the book is, was called Killing for Company. And that, in any, you know, day things. Put but, them under the flare boards. Yeah. I mean, after a while, he's running out of storage space. He lived in two separate flats. But there comes a point where he's running out of storage space. <laughs> you know, you're opening up the wall unit and somebody's heat rolls, so you're going, oh, fuck's sake, man. Fucking pushing the heat. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I, I'm sure the, the, the gin's in here somewhere. And he opens the fridge and fucking a leg falls. Oh, for fuck's sake. So what he started doing, he cut body parts up and he flushed them down the lavy pan, right? And then the drains get blocked. And Dynarod get phoned oh. to go and unblock the drains. And the Dynarod guy comes out, looks down, I think there's a, a somebody's horn down God. there. Right, seriously. I mean, fuck's sake. And Dynarod goes away to re report this. Mm. Th that night, the neighbour, downstairs neighbour, Nielsen goes down the manhole. Right. Doing a stank, right? And takes the body parts away. And Dynarod guy comes back the next day and says, I'm sure I saw a horn down there. You've saved and yourself an arm and a leg. Aye, just as well, because that would have cost you an arm and a leg to fix, aye? Right, so, so what happened was, the downstairs neighbour says, that fucking weirdo, him up there that's always shouting at his dog, mm -hmm. he was doing there during the night doing that stank so the busies get phoned in the flat Pff, fun it all that's him done that was him done god. and he says when 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 they caught him he says thank god i'm glad it's over i'm amazed you never phoned me before i was i've been dying to get caught this it's a nightmare for me seriously instead of just walking into the police station and saying i've killed all these folk i i Aye, this, he must be, he must have been wired around why though, surely. You've certainly got a talent for <laughs> understanding. <laughs> I mean, when, but you know, I mean, some people wear odd socks, you know, I mean, some people shout at traffic. Do you think that was a criminal psychologist report? <laughs> when he submitted them on it? Aye. He's heat uh, wired. Aye, aye, aye. I think there's something wrong with this guy. <laughs> He's murdered 15 people.
He's murdered 15 he people. flushed them down the toilet. And, well, it was parts of body parts mm. he flushed down the toilet. And it blocked up the drain. Diner rod caught him. I mean, these days it would be like Stacey Solomon that would catch him. You know who she is? Aye. She's Does she know Stacey Solomon investigates him? I think it was somebody else. No, she basically comes into your house and tells you how to utilise your space. So she would have Oh, right, that. aye. And there's that wee Korean woman... That guess she say a prayer and then fling all your clothes out. <laughs> Is that right? I don't, I don't know. know if she's Korean or Japanese or K- Korea or something. Aye. And she says fling all your clothes out and all that because you only need the one cardigan, the one bonnet, <laughs> and you give thanks for your clothes and that sort of thing. So it showed you pictures inside his wardrobe, right? And it was all black bags, and he he. The body parts in black bags and the smell apparently was horrendous and there's a photograph that was taken in the wardrobe with a black bag and two of the you know the air fresheners and there's a, a, a lot of gel in them and he had two air fresheners on top of it to try and mask the stink I mean it must have been unbelievable mm. Anybody, I mean, maybe but but the fourteenth or fifteenth victim came in and went, "Whoa, it's, it's a bit off in here." Aye. Are you sure you're no murdering people and just chopping their bodies up? And going, "Oh, you're a good laugh." Here, do you want to listen to Abba? Here, put the headphones on. I, so I think the fact there was probably fifteen pairs of shoes and fifteen jackets at the front door and, <laughs> and, I, and, and a two bed flat, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were all different sizes. Going, hmm. It's a bit funny. Or maybe they think he's a master of disguise. Mm. Maybe hangs him for a bit of cosplay or something. <laughs> Who knows? So he was Scottish. Yes, he was from Fraserburgh. Mm. He, he, Fraserburgh up in Aberdeenshire, and it says the seat of his psychosis was was born out of seeing his grandfather, who he was very close to, die when he was a child. He was maybe four or five years old, and it. And the, the the grandfather lay dead in the bed. We and 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 he and he looked at his grandfather and he wondered why he was dead or if he was still there. And he said that he says in the book that it affected him, but whether it's true or no, mm. who knows? They're all meant on Fraserburgh. Somebody threw a pint at me in Fraserburgh. No, if somebody threw a pint at you in Fraserburgh, I think they're probably a very good judge of character. <laughs> uh, I think you're doing the, the good people of Fraserburgh a disservice. <laughs> what did you get a pint flung at you for? Because I said a Ranger Celtic joke and he picked a side and threw a pint and he was uh, an ambulance driver. Well, he was maybe trying to drum up some business for himself. <laughs> maybe it was a quiet night and he says, uh, nee, 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 cause, eh, I'm just going to glass this ball bag. Put him under my flare. <laughs> there you go. Whack. So that, that's, that's the story of Dennis Nielsen. I'd never really heard of him. Don't you remember it? I mean, no. when was it's he caught? It's a bit like that Dahmer guy in America. So Jeffrey Dahmer. Like no, Jeffrey Dahmer took it one step further. I mean, although Dennis Nielsen, there was a pot on Dennis Nielsen's cooker and there was fat on the cooker and all that and he'd, be, he'd try to boil the heads and the body parts and all that Jeez, to break man. them down, to flush them down. The toilet. <laughs> to flush them down the lavvy. So the skin comes off. Apparently when you boil somebody's head, <laughs> it's, it loosens the skin. I don't know. I've never tried it myself. <laughs> Right. This is terrible, I was laughing at this. But there was human fat found on his okay. cooker. What Jeffrey Dahmer did, and there's certainly parallels, he he started eating some of his victims. Mm. So that's the only difference there. But very similar thing going on. Mm. So his victims went down the toilet in the rainway if he was eating them. Well, he digested them, didn't he? Oh. Ah, he had come out his digestive tract. There you go. But that wouldn't be suspicious to America's version of Dino Rod. <laughs> that would simply go swimming into Lake Superior or wherever. So I'm going to drop some arms and legs down the toilet and we're going to have a break just now. But coming up now is one of our clips from our live show. And then we'll see you back after the quick interval. So we're going to come back to serial killers, but first of all, here's some clips from our live shows. So what tips would you give them? What, what would they have to do to make yourself more 
well, what do you call it when an actor's getting an acting job? Castable or something? <laughs> <laughs> what well, else? Um, it's a marathon, not a sprint, just keep at it. Uh, you're halfway there, he's got a career, he's a funny guy, he's got a profile. I've he's got a heart John murmur. John Fully she'd be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him the truth, he can handle it. Sorry. Just, just keep chipping away, keep going, keep going. Because there's a lot, a lot of rejection. Get, uh, get used to rejection. Oh, he's used to that. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking, he's like a suit of arm and he's got on. You know, I just, fuck you, bounce his half up there, brother. <laughs> You're pissed on me, there, brother. And remember, if you want to buy tickets to any of our Glasgow Dad live shows, including our special guest shows, visit glasgowdad.com or click on our bio link across any of our socials. And also remember our Patreon launches on Father's Day, where for as little as £3 you can get access to bonus content. So, back to everything serial killers. Because the most popular serial killer... Popular? Popular, popular is maybe not maybe. the best word to Infamous, you. maybe. Infamous. Infamous yeah. is a better word. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that Adolf Hitler, very popular back in his day. <laughs> well, he was. Well, he was big in Germany. Anyway. <laughs> so, Bible John... Was probably infamous. Aye, because he nobody knows who he is. Well, still. he's probably did know. So, will we ever know? Tell us about Bible John. So he killed three, three women, didn't he? He killed three women, three women. in the nineteen sixties, and uh, never caught. So well, tell the viewers about Bible John about his mo. What did he do? His mo. His modus operandi. Or his motive. No, the way he did it. How did he do it? Where did oh, he the meet his victims? So for <laughs> fuck's sake, man! How can hell? I'm a comedian, not a care worker, right? So obviously his name's Bible John because he read verses. Well, from you the know Bible. what? That, that's a quite a unique name. So why was he called? Tell us about him. So basically, he obviously uh, hung around the Barrowlands in Glasgow, and he was notorious for quoting verses of the Bible to his victims, but he also prayed on women that well, were... Well, how did they know he quoted verses of the Bible to his victims? Because they were dead. Because it was friends of the victims that were in back of taxis. Ah, right. So that's where... So the people saw this guy. They, oh, aye. They identified him. Aye, well, it was the first time in history the Scottish police had ever issued an EFIT photograph with Bible John. They'd never issued a drawing. Ever. And what year was that? 60s? 60s, 70s? Aye, it must have been 62, 63, I think. Right. So it was the first ever EFIT photograph they'd ever released. And they had to get it all signed off with the Crown Prosecution in order to do it. And he, he was a ginger as well. He'd read to you. Oh, really? Aye, he's a things were well, that, 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 for him. That narrows it down in Scotland. <laughs> we're looking for a serial killer. Right, what does he look like? Ginger hair? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Aye. It'd be easier if he was baldy. Right. So they never. If he was baldy, he would get away with it now. Because everybody's baldy. All the guys my age been scalping the eckies twenty years ago. Anyway, neither here nor there. <laughs> Carry on. So, uh, so obviously he was never found. Right. And then the re one of the reasons he was never found as well is because the evidence was poorly stored by the police. So He's you're saying the police were at fault? A lot of the police were at fault for the evidence, how poor it was. Because my next door neighbour was the ex-head of CID in Glasgow. All right. When the Bible John case. So what did he say about it? You he, you spoke to him about I it? spoke to him about it. So he, was, he wasn't he was actually on the case because it wasn't seen as a massive case at the time. What was the biggest case Aye. bigger than that? No. But <laughs> the Great Iron Brew Heist. Right. What, what, what do you mean it was not a bit? What, what the fuck was the case? The caramel the, toffee. Was there a Tunnock's tea cakes counterfeiting going on? What's going on here? No, at the time when it first came out, there was not a big sort of investigation about it, but then the second body and then the third, and that's where it really drove all the resources. I think they had over 100 policemen working on it at any given time. But they couldn't they obviously so work he it. told you this? Aye. He told you the, the police made an asset? Well, the evidence that was stored, it wasn't stored correctly. Well, they made an asset. Aye. Well, they... Well, to use a criminologist term. Aye, they made an asset. What happened to that evidence? We made an arse. Aye. So a lot of it was found just in storage and known evidence bags and things. Right. Years later. I think the only thing they had was a semen sample. 
You know, that could have came for you, anybody. Aye, <laughs> literally. There's a ginger pub in it. We think he's a ginger. <laughs> That's what really they, they decided Tobin <laughs> wasn't Bible John because his the DNA... Well, he wasn't match. a ginger. No, he wasn't. He got done for the one murder, and but they suspect he had murdered a lot of other people. Mm. So I mean, he, he was evil. Aye, so I actually met Peter Tobin. You met Peter Tobin? I met Peter. I never met him. Is in the right, mate? How you doing? Uh, but I walked by him. You walked by him? One of the officers at HMP Edinburgh took me to see him in his cell. I got to look through the window. Are you a fucking peep show here? <laughs> it was the worst peep show I'd ever seen. Why, was he bollock naked? No, he was, he, was in a bar, he was in his wheelchair and all that. Jesus. Weird. So tell us about that. So, what were you doing in a jail? What? Well, obviously, you know that I used to work with prisoners and rehabilitation and stuff. And I got asked to do a gig within HMP Edinburgh. No. I done a gig in HMP Edinburgh. Right. I done a gig in Sockton. Sockton is... And it was about 15 years ago. And I remember, I was a band on as well. Very good band. And I was doing comedy after the band. And this happened, by the way. I'm doing the gig. I'm doing the gig. It's going all right. One guy stands up and goes, Fuck this. I'm not listening to this piss. Take me back to my cell. This guy would rather be dubbed up. <laughs> <laughs> in his cell rather than listen to my comedy and I said to the guy who was with the booker I says what happened there he says well I was against his human rights we can't even force him to sit and listen to you we that don't want brilliant. sued so we took him back to his cell so the guy would rather sit in solitary confinement than, than listen, listen to, to me. you <laughs> sorry I understand that but uh, I was so I was doing a gig at HMP Edinburgh and as you know I played Bible John in a drama and I spoke about that on stage, and a guy shouted, he's here. Now, when he said he's here, I thought he meant he's in the fucking audience. But he wasn't, he was in his cell. So you're saying it was Tobin? Apparently he admitted in jail that he killed 48 people. To whom? To officers. Really? Aye. Well, how did you know Jesus. that? Because I've got inside knowledge. But you can't say in the point. You've got to fucking... Aye, open it. But you've said it. Right, well, tell us all about it. Tell us right. So a criminal psychologist, he, 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 he put forward to a criminal psychologist that he'd killed 48 women. And the psychologist done what? Reported that? Well, what? I think it's it's, in, it's out there. So who told you that? Public domain. A prison officer? Contacts within the prison service. And then they says, do you want to see him? And I says, would you... And he just took you past his cell? past his cell and he was just sitting in a wheelchair. He was in a bad way then. I think it was only maybe a year before he died. Fucking hell. Yeah, it was weird. Just they looked. Uh, it's certainly weird. Uh, did anything weird happen today? Uh, the ass fell out this bag. Did anything <laughs> weird happen today? The air went down in my tyres. How weird was your day? Aye. I had a look at Peter Tobin. Yeah. That's weird. Yep. I've seen Luke Mitchell as well. Who's Luke Mitchell? You don't know Luke Oh, he's the boy that's. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a lot of people mm. that say that that's uh, conviction's unsafe. Aye, I'll no say. But, I'll, I'll no tell you the story about that in the podcast. Or I'll end the, up in there myself. He was in, in shot. Uh, Sockton, he was in shots. Mm. Moved about. They're all rotated, quite a lot. Is that right? But Tobin was in Edinburgh, all the time, because he he was jailed in '93 for ten years. Peter Tobin. And then he was released. And then he murdered. Ten, and then he murdered Angelina Cluke. Yeah, just but, around the corner here. Yeah. That's right, because I, I was staying in the Hilton Hotel that night when all the police engrossed on that all went round that church and I was Whoa. saying to my wife, what's going on? What, what's going on there? And then it all came out and then they went to Kent. Because well, he went on the run. And then they searched his house in Kent and they found two other bodies there. That's amazing, I don't remember that. Yeah, and that's when he was given a, obviously a life sentence with no chance of getting out. But then he admitted, apparently, allegedly, he admitted to a criminal psychologist that he'd killed 48 women. Sorry, right. 48 people. Whether they were all women or no, I don't know. Yeah, I know, but dudes, where does that come from? What makes them like that? Well, they say it's your childhood upbringing. Peter Sutcliffe. The Yorkshire Ripper, right? Mm. They said he had an issue with his relationship with his mother. That his mother or something, I don't know, committed adultery or something. And he had a whole thing about that and about women that were immoral. And hence, he went and murdered, I don't know, 
he murdered about 15 people and the majority of them were, were, were prostitutes, sex workers. And Harold Shipman as well, he was the biggest serial killer. Well, player. Harold Shipman, they reckon he murdered 250 pensioners and he'd done it under the radar because he's a doctor and old people die anyway. So he was just giving them a wee jag or a pill or whatever he was doing and he was killing them. But I spoke to somebody who was an undertaker and Harold Shipman died in prison and he said he killed his cell. But the undertaker that I met who had gone to get his body, he was there, he said... He was told he wasn't the only person in that cell that night. That the allegedly, I think what it was alluding to that somebody else done the old boy in. So he killed what over two hundred people. Two hundred fifty. I think two hundred fifty. I think the only positive to come out of that is you're probably likely to get an appointment at that doctor's. You certainly would. It's funny enough when 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 he was at large. NHS no problem with waiting list. I thought you said when he was at Largs. I was like, oh, he was God. at Largs. No, he was at Largs. <laughs> he was at Large. You're always going to get folk like that that slip through the net, though, in those careers, aren't you? Of course there is. Right now, right now in the world, there's people, and without a doubt, there's people in positions of trust doing evil things. Evil things, man. Because it's awful when you see these sort of posters or you see these documentaries and people's boys and daughters have been missing for like 30, 40 years and you're just thinking about, they must be somewhere. Other people, their sons and daughters go missing. You, you're like the proverbial bad penny. Every day, turn up, bing, on the button. <laughs> I'd scream too loud. I know. I, I imagine, to be honest, I think if anybody kidnapped you, they'd end up doing their cellar. <laughs> but that's just life. <laughs> so we've touched on Scottish serial killers. Anybody else? Well, I, one of the books I read was The Iceman, which was Richard Kuklinski. Now, he was from New Jersey, the United States. He only recently died, actually. And there was a film made about him starring Michael Shannon. He played the Iceman. Now, it was a book written by Philip Carlos, his name. And Kuklinski was a hitman for the Gambino crime family in America. So one of the capos was a guy called Roy DeMio. And Roy DeMio himself was a homicidal maniac, right? And they would murder people and they would take them to the Gemini Lounge in the Bronx or Brooklyn, wherever it was, and they would hang them in the bath and bleed them and chop them up and do various things. But Kuklinski, in the book, claimed that he, he claimed, don't know how truthful it was, but he claimed to have killed 200 people. And he, he said in the book, early in his career, he used to practice killing people. And what he would do, he would come into New York and walk along the Hudson River in Manhattan. And what he would do, he would just, he would see winos or tramps or homeless people and he would just kill them and throw them in the river. And they never, nobody's bothered. Nobody's bothered about, a, you know, some old paraffin lamp that's get murdered. Just, he turns up, did might have been stabbed, a ah, big deal. There's a body, fish out, he's a tramp, nobody bothers in the morgue. So, so he, he killed a lot of homeless people, a lot of drunks, that sort of thing. And he, and he, and he, and he practised ways of killing them quickly and different ways of dispatching them. You know, trying to kill them with his bare horns and all that. He was six feet five or something. A big, massive, you know, powerful man. And the the book, in the film and all, which is quite close to the book, pretty terrifying dude, actually. But he definitely did hits for the Gambino crime family. And what he would do was he used poison... He used poison on people. So what he would do, he would invite somebody to for a bite to eat or a drink and he'd put strychnine 
in the drink, you know that, mm. and the person in front of him would drink it, and whoosh, light suit man. Mm. See, I'd be terrible at that because if I get me and my wife a glass of wine, I always forget what one's mine and hers, and I did. Well, that. you just put strychnine in the two of them. <laughs> That's not good if I like to get bumped hard on myself. I think if she ever does and uh, turn up bumped, this is uh, evidence. <laughs> I think spiking somebody's drinks. But that's what Kuklinski did. But, uh, he'd, and he would put strychnine on a sandwich, you know that. I mean, he, he, he was heavy into poison as well. Let's slip it in a toast and stuff. Aye, aye. Just, oh, how difficult would it have been to clean his breville, right? <laughs> but aye, that's, that's what he'd done. He poisoned, stabbed, shot. Strangled. I mean, he was pretty flexible. You always wonder if these folk get little, like bits in their finger. Now, when you cut a chili, and then you put it in your eye. I mean, I've done that because everybody's done. It. Everybody's been working with chilies, and you went like that. You your eye. Oh no way! <laughs> and your eye ends up like a cricket ball. Oh no! I touched my eye. Or even worse, you rub your ball bag. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> your, your boys are <laughs> I mean, you can't even teabag the missus. Well, fuck, I don't like chilies. Right. So, <laughs> so, so you wonder if he's working with a poison, he's going to, oh, he'll enjoy that. Oh. <laughs> the game. Because that Salisbury drama was brilliant. Did you oh, watch a Novi that? Chalk. Oh. Aye, I mean, there, there was that. What, what was the, the, the guy in his oh. daughter's name? Screepal. Their name it. was Screepal. That was their name. Um, where are the Skripals? Because I remember the Russian ambassador came on the telly and says, where are the Skripals? Your government's telling you a load of pish. Or, well, you say that in Russian, as I just say that in Russian with a Sean Connery accent. <laughs> Your government's telling you a load of pish in the hunt for Red October. Anyway, so the point is, I, that, I mean, somebody else died just... Setting it up. Like, Whoa, fuck, man. Yeah. I mean, that's dodgy stuff. Aye. If I had to kill somebody, I'd just do the simple thing and like push them down the stairs. Or, but I need guarantee they'll die <laughs> if you push them down the stairs. <laughs> there is if it's fucking poison at the bottom. Of it. <laughs> oh, but, but you're gonna you're gonna potentially do your cell in if there's poison at the bottom. That's the point about poison. Mm. Poison gets everywhere. If I had a gun, I'd shoot them in the heat. That's easy. You can't get a gun now, thankfully, in this mm. country. I couldn't stab somebody, it's too messy. Do you know what you should do? You should just talk and you'll bore the bastard to death. <laughs> That's what you should do. They'll jump at the window, they'll oh, nail. <laughs> <laughs> You'll put the lights out in 15 minutes. That's your method of dispatch. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, we're about to take our final breath, but before then, here's the clip that you decided was the best from last week. Dad, Hannah's asking what it is you put in your soup to give it a bit of a kick. Eggies. Fuck off. And remember to visit glasgowdad.com for all our upcoming performances, including any Glasgow shows and the Edinburgh Fringe. And remember that Patreon if you're wanting to support us in other ways so that we can keep making great content. And you seem to be enjoying it so far. So make sure you tell your friends about the podcast if you loved us. But if you didn't, fuck off. <laughs>